do male testosterone levels dictate how much sperm a male produces or is it the or is it the other way so the development of the male reproductive system you know is multifaceted and part of it is testosterone and part of it is development of the sertoli cells which will later, later become sperm cells all of that is um we would say correlated they're they're all related so if you lower um yeah so so things that lower testosterone ultimately when the fetus grows up will result in lower sperm count Mm. on average and and that's that link the link to that early exposure and the later sperm count seems to be this distance, which I think you've heard about and read about, which is the distance, which is called the taint <laughs> or the gooch on the street, you know, the <laughs> grundle, yeah. all kinds of names. But but this distance is simply the distance, how much space the generals take up, right? How much is, how much real estate, right? And um, so in a, in a typical male, that's going to be more than in a female, right? Because the, for the female, everything is offside, if you will. You don't see the ovaries. You don't see the eggs. You don't see where they were in a male. They're out there. They're hanging there. And 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 so they're taking up room. So that distance, if that's shortened, that means that everything there is smaller, right? Mm-hmm. And that is controlled by testosterone in early pregnancy. It's really weird, isn't it? But but that's that's so critical. It's to give the guy a good start <laughs> in those first weeks of pregnancy is it's really important. You don't want to mess with that. Yeah, what's you know scary when I you know I read in your book is that the is that the anogenital distance is that the right yes. I guess the scientific yeah. term. That's good. Yeah, great, um, perfect. <laughs> awesome. I don't sound like an idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah. That that distance is shrinking, like compared you know to today compared to the I guess 1950s. That distance has shrunk actually, by actually, John. I wish I knew that. Oh, okay. I think it is, but there's no data oh. on AGD intergenital distance in the 1950s, and here not a humans. So, so here's the story about this little measure. For a long time, all the way back to the 1912, I think scientists knew that in rodents, males and females, they knew about it. They knew it was important. And they knew that for females, it was smaller than in males. And it makes sense. And it's actually true for most mammals. But it wasn't used for human studies. It wasn't used for epidemiology. It wasn't used for the kind of thing I do. Until, you know, in the late, like around 2000, um, I started to hear about this distance as something that had been looked at in animal studies. And one human study, but had never related it to these exposures. So I thought, okay, what's going on here? And then I heard about phthalates, <laughs> right? So a, a colleague of mine, John Brock from CDC, we were sitting on an airplane. We had a lot of time. And he goes, Shauna, you should look at phthalates. And I said, well, I never heard of them. Nobody heard of them. This was 2000. and. Um, why? And he said, well, everybody's exposed to them. They're, you know, everyday products. They're very common. And in animals, they cause this disturbance of general development, which is called the phthalate syndrome. So I was like, whoa, that's kind of big because there aren't any other syndromes. There's not a dioxin syndrome or a PCB syndrome or a, you know, whatever this is singled out as an important enough to give it a name like this. So I thought, okay, what, what is that? And and so I looked at that and I studied that and um, people at um, EPA had been publishing on this and um, also the national toxicology program. And, and they were showing that specific count, you know, if you fed the mother certain phthalates in her water (laughs) or in her food, when she's pregnant, early in pregnancy, this is a rat. Can't feed this to humans, by the way, (laughs) not ethical. But if you do this in a rat or a mouse, you see that this distance is actually shortened, measurably shortened, significantly shortened. 
right? And then you can see other problems, um, problems with whether the testicles descend properly, not so much if the mother is exposed, and whether the scrotum is smaller and so on. And yes, this is all smaller and less developed, mm. less moving in the masculine direction. So let's back up for a minute and, and, and let me just point out, you know this from reading this, I know you know this, but maybe your listeners don't know this, that originally starting out, the <clears throat> genital tract is very simple. It's just one ridge. It's the same in males and females. You couldn't tell a male from a female if you didn't do a genetic test, right? And, um, and then uh, in rats around day 18, in humans, we don't know exactly, but somewhere in the early first trimester, they, there's a genetic signal to start pro- testes to start developing, the testicles to develop, and they produce testosterone. And that starts setting things in motion. And what it does is it makes the males and female genital tracts diverge, mm-hmm. become different. And then what will be the ovary in the female becomes the testicle in the male and so on. Right. So if, if you interfere with that, um, you're going to end up with a a boy who is not completely masculinized. Mm -hmm. And the result of that is that when he grows up and starts to produce sperm, he will have fewer sperm. And when he goes to try to have a child, he will be less fertile. So how do we know that? We know that by looking at this distance in adult men and seeing that men, and we did this and other colleagues did this in in men. It's easy to measure, by the way, you just need the little calipers and probably a lot of people listening to this are measuring right now, (laughs) but (laughs) you can, Oh, if it's shorter then the man on average will have a lower sperm count. And infertile men will tend to have a shorter distance. So it's all kind of one package, um, and it's all tied to testosterone, which in turn can be influenced by these chemicals. And that's why I'm so hot on these chemicals. 